Today we are going to see how to install the Infinity Canopy on a 12x12 pergola and how fast and easy it is for anyone to do it without special tools or expertise. First we must install the parallel cable wires that support the canopy between two opposing structures. There is a great deal of tension on the cable wires, so you must make sure that the structures are strong enough to provide proper support. If you plan to attach your cable to a wall, make sure to install on structural studs. Infinity Canopy is uniquely designed so it can attach to the cables anywhere you can place them. This allows for great flexibility in selecting the best spot for cable attachment points on your structure. To determine the best location for cable attachments, hold one of the supplied profiles against the structure at the desired height, then center and level it. Mark the desired location of cable attachments on the structure and make sure it is within 1 to 16 inches from each of the profiles. Using the marked profile, find and mark the location of cable attachment points on the opposing wall, making sure that all points are at the same level and parallel. Install the iPad, iRing, and screw or bolt on the marked areas of your structure. For this installation, we have used iBolts. With the cable connectors in place, insert one end of the cable and run it through all eyes with both ends coming together near the structure. To connect the cable ends together and tension the cable, we use a special turnbuckle that eliminates the need for swaging of the cable ends that requires pre-measurement and special tools. To attach the cable to the turnbuckle, first open the long screws without completely removing them and open the cones on each end to remove the inner jaws. Starting with one end of the cable, first insert a cone into the cable, then open the jaw and insert the cable into the jaw. The cable has to come out of the circular end of the jaw and stick out about 3 sixteenths of an inch, or 5 millimeters. Now push the cone, jaw, and cable to the end of a long screw. Attach the little nut immediately after the cone. This locks the cone so it cannot open. Tighten it using two wrenches. Before connecting the other side of the cable to the turnbuckle, we need to cut off any extra cable. Hold the turnbuckle and bring the cable's free end and the turnbuckle together tightly. Then mark the desired cut location, plus one inch, and cut the excess cable. To connect the cable to the other end of the turnbuckle, first remove the long screw from the turnbuckle and connect it to the cable as shown before. Don't forget to first insert the cone before installing the jaw. With the cable secured with only a few turns, connect the long screw to the central cylinder. We want the turnbuckle to be fully extended with the long screws open equally. Closing the turnbuckle requires two people. Using two wrenches, hold the long screw's ends to prevent them from turning. Then insert a short pin into the central cylinder and turn it to tighten the turnbuckle. Don't try to close the turnbuckle by tightening the long screws, as it can result in closing the turnbuckle unevenly and unwinding of the cable. The turnbuckle can contract 7 inches from the fully open position to remove most lag and tighten the cable. With the cables in place, we are now ready to assemble the canopy. For this installation, we want to cover a 12x12 pergola with two rows of canopy. Each row requires 6 panels and 7 profiles. To confirm our measurements, hold the profile marked earlier against the structure. Center it and mark the contact points with the cable again. Place seven profiles back to back with the triangular channel facing up and align the ends with a ruler. Then, using a ruler, mark the location of the cable on the remaining profiles. The cable connectors are composed of two parts. The base that slides into the upper channel of the profile and the clip which screws onto the base. Insert three bases for the first and last profile, and two bases for the remaining profiles. Then align the central holes with the profile's markings, and tighten the side screws to secure the bases inside the profile. On the first and last profile, we don't secure the third base in the middle. With the bases in place, we can now install the clips and the control tape. The use of control tape is optional, but having it will improve the canopy's look and uniformity. It can also be used to create unique designs as you can control the flatness and bellowing of each section. Measure the length of the installed cable and divide it by the number of panels. 
In this case, we have measured our cable to be 132 inches end to end. So we divide 132 by the number of panels, 6, and get 22 inches. This is how much each section must open so we have uniform panels end to end. The dots in the control tape are approximately 1 inch apart, so we count 22 dots and mark the tape, then fold it over and mark the rest of the tape. Using a sharp tool, puncture the marked locations on the control tape. Insert the clips into the tape and screw the clips on the bases with the opening of the clip facing towards each end of the profile. Make sure the control tape doesn't get twisted. Finally, install the middle clips on the first and last profile, but again without tightening them so the clip can move freely along the profile's length. End caps prevent the canopy panels from sliding out of the profile. Loosen the end cap screw and insert one into each profile, one side only. Tighten the screw to secure the end caps in place. You can now install the canopy frame on the wire cables to install the panels. The installation of the panels can also be done with a canopy on the ground or a work desk if needed. Lift the first profile and push the clips gate into the cable on each side. Repeat for the remaining profiles until they are all on the cable. With the piece framework in place, we can proceed to install the panels. Bring the profiles together and insert one edge of the panel into the first profile's inside channel. Insert the other edge of the panel into the next profile's outside channel and slide the panel into the profiles. The pattern is always inside to outside or the two channels from each profile that are next together. Once all panels are in place, we install the remaining end caps to prevent the panels from falling out. Now we can lock the canopy on either end and close or open it in either direction. With the remaining control tape, you can also make a pull handle on either end. Simply cut the desired length, fold it over, and insert the middle clip into the tape and secure it. Your canopy is now ready to provide you with many years of beautiful shade, and if you ever get tired of it, you can change it with new panels in as short as 15 minutes.